snow with a one horse open sleigh. Hello friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. This is a weekly series that I do here on my YouTube channel where I dig into my stash of older beautiful papers or dyes, tools, techniques, products, and we create something beautiful together. Since it's Christmas, I've dug into the last little bits of my Graphic 45 Time to Flourish papers. We've been doing uh, monthly banners with this all year in 2023, and I had just a little bit of the paper, and I mean a little bit of the paper left over, and I wanted to show you how you can take those tiny bits and bobs of paper to create a really beautiful large size. This is a five by seven tea party in a box, just by using a few simple little tricks, and I'll show you those in the tutorial that's coming up. So on our cover, we've got some beautiful die-cut glitter stars, some Renee Bouquet's printed beautiful board and snowflakes, flowers from her shop, of course, the Graphic 45 papers, this beautiful, really reasonable ribbon, uh, bold check plaid, and just some little berries and such from my stash. So I've glittered up the beautiful board. It's still drying. It'll be really stunning when it's completely done, but I hope you can pick up that little bit of shimmer and shine. And then on the inside, believe it or not, we were able to make a flip page. Again, by using simple little tricks that stretch your paper and our tea party in a box where I have a vintage demi tasse spoon, a honey stick, a little gift pouch with a Ghirardelli Christmas peppermint chocolate and Christmas tea, a peppermint stick, and Biscoff cookies. So basically everything you need to have a tea party for one. You have room to write a little sentiment here. You've got lots of room to write a message here. You're going to learn how to make this box pocket. I'm gonna teach you some of my very best crafty tricks for stretching your paper stash. So if you'd like to make this card along with me, hang around. The tutorial's coming up next. get started making this Christmas tea party in a box. The first thing you're going to do is build your base and to do this I cut two five by eight and a half inch panels from 110 pound white cardstock. The first panel I scored at seven and seven and three quarters and then I took the second panel and you can see how I tucked it up into this little flap on the first panel. It's pretty simple, really. But it makes for a really neat and tidy interior. And then I just trimmed it to the correct height so that we have a five by seven inch card. Pretty simple, really. We're gonna build the inside of the card first, which is what I like to do. And on the top, we have a little flap element, the green is four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And the red is six and a half by six and a half. And I scored it at one and three quarters. And you can find these measurements in the description box below this video. So when you're making a card like this and you only have little bitty scrap pieces to work with, you have to get creative. So I'm gonna show you how I make this work for me. I've got this element from the eight by eight pad. I've got these scraps left over from another project. I have all of these scraps and I have the December ledger page. So the first thing we're gonna do is glue these pieces down onto the flap. And I want to use the text side. So I'm just going to center this piece on the bottom and this is, these are just leftovers, but the width of this obviously is less than one and three quarters. 
um, it is, okay, our flap is actually, yeah, so our little piece is one and five eighths. And then I had another small piece that I cut to be the same width. And are these going to completely cover this panel? No, they are not. But we have a fix for that. So now we have this. To cover this little gap, we're going to take our December and we're going to put glue just on the one side. And we're going to glue this right here. Look at that. And no one knows that those were paper pieced and that they didn't completely cover the panel. So flip this open. We've got a little area here where you can write a note. I went ahead and cut some pieces to miter for our page. And these are 3 fourths of an inch wide by They happen to be six and a quarter inches. I'm gonna start with the top pieces, which are four, I believe, and th four and a quarter by three quarter inches. And if you've mitered corners with me before, feel free to charge ahead and get on with the next thing. And if you don't want to miter the corners, oops, it's always good to have the text right side up if you can do that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. If you don't want to miter the corners, you don't have to. You can just overlap. But the key is making sure that your papers are completely perpendicular and lining them up. And then as you can see, they'll match really nicely. Okay? start on the bottom and I'm going to come down about a quarter of an inch. I want this to be nice and straight and I want the distance between this point and the outside edge and this point and the fold to be approximately the same. Then you just match up your corners. Day or two ago, thought I'd take a ride. Soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. The horse was leaning. Then our December piece is just going to sit over this really pretty, okay? And we used way less paper there than we would have if we had um, put that whole piece down. And now you have this area to write a beautiful note. And then these pieces are trimmed out to fit. These are both little scraps. And again, I cut them to one and five eighths. We have this little area of overlap and we can just take Mary and Bright and glue that over it. 
and nobody knows that you join your papers. Pretty cool, huh? So there's the top flap done. Down here on the bottom, we're going to build a box we pocket. Do a drift it back, and we we got upset. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. So for the box pocket, I have an eight inch by four and a half inch piece of the same cardstock, and on the left, I've scored it at three quarters and one and a half, and on the right, I've also got two three quarter inch score lines. So let me give you those measurements. Yeah, three quarters and one and one half and six and a half and seven and a quarter. And then you're also going to score at three and three and three quarters. Bring in your scissors. And again, if you've done this a million times, feel free to move ahead to the next step. I won't be offended. We're just gonna cut out these outer two boxes on each side and remove them. All right. And then, we're going to come into the second score line and we're going to cut straight up to the top score line and then we're going to cut just a little skinny triangle out like that so that it will fold nicely into the bottom of the box. Repeat that over here. Now fold on your scored lines. Here's our pocket, it's lying face down. Flip your little tabs up, place adhesive on them. And then fold them in and adhere them to the bottom of your box pocket. You wanna make sure your corners are neat and square Everything lines up nicely. All right, so you see how these are glued down into the bottom of the box pocket? I'm just gonna secure that a little bit better. And then fold your side flaps in Place your adhesive on the bottom right here. Whoops. And just fold these up so that they so that they meet nice and neat. Okay. I think I gave you the measurements for this, but just in case I didn't, the green is four and seven eighths by six and a half, and the red is four and uh, three quarters by six and a half. All right. So we're going to take our box pocket. I always check to make sure it fits, and it does. It's a great fit. So now we're going to put our adhesive on it. I'm gonna stand my card up and line my pocket up. 
and I'm gonna come in with a bone folder and go inside and just press it into place. And this way I know it's nice and straight. Okay. And you can see now the card will stand, which is so fun. That is such a fun design. I'm going to trim this piece to a height of three and three quarters. So now I've got another pretty little scrap to work with. And I'm going to score along the bottom. One, two, three, three quarters of an inch. All right, and fold this. Now this is six inches, and our pocket is five inches. So we can put this on here, and we can score this at five and a half, and we can score it at a half over here. Bring in your scissors. Do the same little tab trick that we did. Place it face down. Fold along those scored lines. And the reason I don't fold until after I've cut is that it's just so much easier to cut um, before you fold on that crease. It, I find that it makes it hard for me to get a good, clean, straight cut. So put your legs up like this. Adhesive. Adhesive. And tuck this in. Just like this. On each side. See that? And then this will fit right over our box pocket. We've got a little gap up here at the top. So I'm gonna look. I found this little piece of the red. This is why I save these itty scraps. This is about a quarter of an inch scrap. I'm gonna put it along the top, just like this. Of course, if you had a sticker piece from the sticker sheet you could also do that and just fold it right round like this all right so that works nicely we're a little short here and here all right We'll continue with the box pocket once we get this part figured out because I have something that I want to do, but I'm not sure if I have enough material to do it. So what I want to do is create a little frame to go here. And I found these little scraps. I cut the width of this one to four and a half inches. So I'm going to glue these pieces down and these are just scraps this one might be five eighths of an inch and i'm just gonna come about an eighth of an inch in and down from the top if you can see we're you we're really using all these little bits and bobs this one's a little wider And I want to line up the height so we don't look like we were digging into the eggnog while making this. And then I'm just going to set this one across the top, just like that. And I think that looks fine. I don't think we have to miter this time. These are such... This really will hardly be noticed, except that it finishes out the, um, the frame for our holiday wishes.
which is a, the four by four cut out of the 12 by 12. So you kind of see how I'm just piecing all of these things together. If you're one of those that saves all your small scraps, you will appreciate this tutorial because um, it really it really does make the most of your paper. So I'm going to take, let me see, this needs to be three inches tall. I want to use this. Let's take this piece and let's cut to three inches. And then this is just about an inch and a quarter. So Kind of split it in half and before we glue this on let's take these pieces and put them underneath our little border and I'll have to trim that but actually I can just fold it see how I just folded it down to the bottom make it fit. I know all these sneaky tricks. Um, hopefully you'll find this useful. I'm always really happy when I can use up all these little bits and bobs of paper to make something really beautiful. Okay, so now we've covered our sides so that that will look complete. And let's come in and I'm going to see how I'm putting my adhesive into the creases along the top on the sides and on the bottom and this just slides right over Presses beautifully into place and you have a little bit of a seam on the sides but because it's on the sides it's not all that noticeable and it's certainly a lot less noticeable than the naked card uh, cardstock would be so there's our box pocket there's our flap with for the cover and it's all just little bits and bobs so this piece is a scrap that is four and a half by two and seven eighths and we're going to glue this down on the top Then I have our eight by eight stamps and I want this to go along the bottom. But before I do that, I've got these two little two and three eighth inch high pieces that I'm just gonna tuck in like this. Sneaky, sneaky. You hardly even notice the paper joint and especially once we get all the pieces put down, you won't, okay? And this goes along the bottom, like this. And this is a little wider, but that doesn't bother me. All right, because it's like a bottom border. I've got our tag from the 12 by 12 cut apart page. And I'm gonna glue this back behind this image that I've matted on red and green, okay? 
All right, so let's work on finishing up this card. I've taken our little assembly here and put foam tape on the back, and I'm gonna center it up. Just like that, all right? And I've got this piece of Renee Bouquet's printed beautiful board that I'm going to put right along oops, the side like this. And I put a double layer on the top and just one piece here. And I will come back and add glitter to the white area so it'll really sparkle that I threaded with gold thread to go on the top of our tag. And I've got these sweet little pieces cut out from the eight by eight, and I'm gonna put a little foam tape on the back and stagger them like this. And I want to glue these down. Right here. I want this to go right here. Just like this. And I'll fuss that bow once the glue sets up. A lot of times what I do is I come back with this slippery kind of string and I'll put a little dot of my Dries Clear Adhesive on the knot and it keeps the bow nice. And that will dry and you won't even see it, but it will keep um, that from shifting around. So I want to take my big star, Let's see if I can slip it under here. And these are just die cut with a nesting stitched star die. And I want it to go like that. I actually want this little guy to go on top of here. There we go. And I want this guy to go here. Then I have a small star. Let's see, do I need to tuck that in or are we good? Oops. That's what I want, people. Secure this with a... There we go. So doing things in threes is always a good design decision. And what we've done is we've created a triangle here that will draw the eye to our little sentiment. And once I trim this gold string, it will look really good. Right now it's a little awkward looking because the string is so long, but we're gonna fix that. In a one-horse open sleigh. In a one-horse open I wanna go ahead and some flowers to this to make it a really like home decor piece as well. 
So I've got these little berries that I want to glue down right here. I've got a small snowflake. It's going to go right here. I'm going to take this large poinsettia. I think I want to put it right about here. These are from the neighbor K's. The berries I picked up out of a clearance bin. Then let's see, let's take this small. These roses and poinsettias go together. So let's put this small one right here. snowflake is just going to tuck in right there so that's very pretty I don't think we need to do one other thing I'm just going to come in and I'll add my glitter but um, other than that I think we're done with the cover so I want to show you a quick fix you can see my glue dribbled here onto my bird and I don't want to leave it like that so I'm going to bring in my heat gun I'm going to rewarm the glue I'm going to take a piece of chipboard and just scoop that away. And do you see how it cleaned that up? How beautifully. No more glue booger. But I didn't burn my fingers either. All right, friends, bonus. here we are all finished up. I added this little Tim Holtz sentiment tag to kind of hold this flap closed, weighed it down a little bit, and I just blotched it up with a little white paint to give it the appearance of snow. And then on the inside, I added our little tag and fussy cut this tiny tag to dress that up. Added the sticker here on the pocket and then all of our goodies in the pocket. And instead of, I didn't have enough of my designer, this is all I have left. <laughs> so I didn't have enough to really wrap the things. But what I did was I used my cardstock and then wrapped some of the little tags and elements around. I put the chocolate and the Christmas tea here on this belly band and then wrapped the little Christmas. And the other side says, very merry. We've got a peppermint stick. We've got a sweet little vintage spoon. Um, all of this goes in the pocket and you can write a message here. You can write a message up here. So I didn't include a note card or anything like that in this one, but it's loaded with goodies. So that'll be a fun thing to open. Just make sure I get everything out of the pocket. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna load these in. And the 
honey stick. And now all we have to do is add our cover. Oh, I also put a little scrap here and a little scrap here to finish it. So now we just have to put on our cover. I'm not sure if my glitter is completely dry, so I'm gonna be careful with this. But I think this turned out really well. Used up my last little bit of, whoops, December time to flourish. It's turned out really beautiful. So it's a like a three-in-one kind of a gift. You've got a greeting card, you've got a tea party in a box, and you've got some beautiful winter decor. You could leave this up easily all winter long because um, it's just beautiful. So that is it for me, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design, Throwback Thursday, using our scraps of Time to Flourish to make a beautiful Christmas card. Thanks for joining me. You'll find basic measurements in the description box below and a link to my blog where I'll have a linked supply list for you so that if you want to make this, you can find the materials. All right, guys, go get your craft on. Bye.